Falkirk boss Ian McCall took over on Thursday at the second time of asking with the job of turning around a season that has so far been pretty traumatic for Dundee United. Trouble on the park for United, one win in their first ten league games, matched by turmoil off it. Eddie Thompson won his long-running battle to take over at Tanadice. And the first casualty of the new regime, manager Alex Smith. Paul Hegarty became boss, he wasn't first or even second choice, but he was contracted until the end of the season. In 86 days, his record of played 18, won 4, lost 9 wasn't good enough. Last week he was out of the cup, now he's out of a job. I feel that uh, I've had it before, but uh, you, can, you can cope, and I will cope. And uh, um, I just feel that I wish I'd got, got more time. Second time around, Ian McCall accepted United's overtures, but new coaches John Hughes and Owen Coyle smiles masked discontent at Falkirk. What I deplore is uh, the instability caused by uh, poaching, by tapping, uh, and uh, in this respect I think the United's uh, uh, actions uh, are unforgivable. So another new face for United's players to get to know, Ian McCall's challenge to satisfy the desire of United fans and a demanding chairman. And we're joined live now from Tannadice by the new Dundee United boss, Ian McCall. Ian, you were on the programme this time last week as the Falkirk boss. Uh, at the second time of asking, what's changed? Why are you now at Dundee United? Well, I mean, I've, I've said it all before the last couple of days, but I mean, I think the, the fact that the, some of the bricks weren't laid in the new stadium, albeit I, I know the stadium's going to go up in Falkirk, I'm sure of that with the board they've got there. Uh, I don't think we would have been allowed and you know you can't guarantee to win the first division two years in a row. I think Falkirk will win the first division this year, the best team in the league in my opinion, by far. But if we don't win it, if Falkirk don't win it the second year then it's another year in the first division. And I felt for once, you know, everybody's been banging on about loyalty. I, I, you know, I've been loyal unbelievably in six years to people and I felt for once I had to make a decision for myself and my family. Now, the last three games at Falkirk, you, you won 4-0, 5-1 uh, and 4-0. You're in the fourth round of the Scottish Cup. You're leading the, the, the first division. I shouldn't say you. Uh, they are leading the first division. Uh, a lot of the Falkirk fans are very disappointed that you, you lead them so far and then, and then, of course, walk away. You can, be, and you can understand why they're upset. Totally. You know, and I'm very sorry for all the Falkirk fans, but uh, they've got two capable guys there now, very good friends of mine, who I'm going to be phoning in the next half hour. Uh, they've got a great chairman, a great set of fans, and when they get the new stadium, they'll be in the SPL, and uh, no doubt we'll be playing them. I don't know what type of reception they'll get, but you know I can only say I'm sorry and hope they understand when I went, the club had been relegated. They're now in a good position, and at times, for the first time in my manager career, I have to think of myself. Yeah, let's talk about yourself now. Let's talk about the positive issues that you're now at Dundee United. You're at a bigger club, uh, aspirations to see in the Premier League, certainly in the first year. What, what was the attraction for you, would you say? Well, I mean, just like in relative terms, Falkirk were a sleeping giant and, and, and you take a step up, I think Dundee United are a sleeping giant. So the, 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 I see this contract in having two parts, from now till the end of the season and then three years. And at the end of that, three years I hope to be judged and really the target is to get in the top four or five in the SPL. Now, just uh, listening to Campbell Christie there, he's saying about uh, tapping and uh, the actions of Dundee United being unforgivable. How do you react to that? Nothing to do with you, per, you know, per se, but uh, the actions of the club and how they come, went about getting you. I don't really want to get involved in that. Campbell's a very close friend of mine. He's a remarkable man, uh, you know. But I see a, I see a hunger in my own chairman now, you know. And, and I've moved on. I don't want to get involved in that type of thing. The relationship we had will never be soured. No matter what the media say, the fans say, the relationship Campbell and I have will never be soured. And I hope to to have a relationship like that with uh, Mr. Thompson. I understand that you were out training with the Dundee United players this morning. Obviously, you don't, haven't had an awful lot of time with them. But uh, what would you say are the no, positive no. points? <laughs> the positive points going into this match this afternoon. Well, I mean, I, th I think uh, it's, the, it's the bottom two clubs, so it's a, it's a game that we can win. Um, we just did some set pieces today. I, I mean, I think we've got a, a hell of a lot of height in the team and it's something we might try and utilise, but uh, it is very early days. But, you know, it's a crucial match and you can never pick and choose your times when you're going to have crucial games. So we've got three, three crucial games coming up and this one is probably the more important one of, of the three. Are you just ever so slightly disappointed that you, you left uh, or you came to Dundee United you know, just at the end of the transfer window because you didn't have a chance to bring anyone in of your own choice? Yes, I'm not, not disappointed. I mean, it's, it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a hardship. I mean, the transfer window's 
uh, at Falkirk at the end of it, you know, I'd have been delighted because nobody could take the three or four boys that are sought after. But at Dundee United, it's a nightmare because we want. I, I would like to go and add, but there's no way I would spend the chairman's money willy nilly and go and you know rush about trying to do four or five deals without thinking about it. I went for Barry Robson at Inverness, Caledonia Thistle. I think he could turn into. A, he, I, I think he's possibly a future international player, and I'll be going in again for him. There's two or three players at Falkirk, but you know, right at this time, I would never, out of respect for Falkirk, have went back for those players. Uh -huh. Now you, you've you've got a great situation potentially with Dundee United because you're in the semi final of a cup this week uh, after you after you get uh, ahead of the uh, the Motherwell game today. Um, potentially you could be in the final if you if you get rid of Celtic it won't be difficult will it? Uh, no, it will be difficult. I don't have <laughs> any doubt about that. But you I mean you're right. Potentially we're in the semi final. We can get to final. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Celtic overwhelming favourites. I mean, everybody's thought of left Falkirk, and, and I'm pretty sure they're going to go to the quarterfinals of the, the Scottish Cup. No disrespect to Allah, but here I'm in a semi-final and uh, with a chance of going to the final. We're up against a formidable team, but uh, you know, if we can get up and at them a little bit, then we've got a chance. Just a final question, Ian. You've got 13 games to turn that around. Just say hypothetically, you're not able to do that, and Dundee United do finish bottom, and Owen Coyle and John Hughes do the job as you think they, they will do at Falkirk. You know, carrying on your great work, uh, they win the first division. What would your thought be about promotion and relegation then? Well, I'm not. I wouldn't answer that. That failure here is not an not an option. Uh, the other part of it, uh, when Falkirk win the league, I'll be celebrating with John and Yogi. Yeah. Uh, you know, failure is not an option at Dundee United. It won't happen. Okay. Uh, thanks very much, Ian, for joining us live from Tannadice. Okay, Thank you. Okay, cheers. Thanks. Cheers, mate. John, just, uh, Gordon, could bring you in here and talk about uh, this this so-called tapping that Campbell Christie called it. Uh, it's Raymond Sparks is, is uh, Ian McCall's agent. He's your partner. Uh, how do you understand how it all happened? Yeah, I mean, I feel sorry for Falkirk because it really is uh, terrible for them. I can understand how Campbell Christie is reacting to what's happened because, uh, you know, his club have, have gone great at the start of this year and they've just won it against Hearts a fantastic result and a good draw in the cup uh -huh. so I can understand exactly how he feels but uh, the whole thing's been precipitated by Eddie Thompson uh -huh. uh, we were working along well Raymond was working along with uh, Eddie Thompson uh, in order to aid Paul Hegarty in getting players in during this window and in the course of that uh, understanding a conversation uh, on uh, I think it was on, on the Sunday regarding uh, Eddie Thompson just made his mind up he wanted to have another go about getting Ian McCall in as manager and uh, I found out about it on Tuesday morning um, that the whole thing was underway mm -hmm. and there was going to be a meeting on the Wednesday so the whole factor has been uh, put in place by Eddie Thompson's desire to get Ian McCall but he made no secret of that right away when, uh, when Alex Smith left he wanted Ian McCall from the very beginning and he stuck past that He's obviously not been happy how the, the game's gone against Hibs in the Cup uh -huh. and decided to, to, to go right away. And so it's tapping to an extent, but I mean, if Raymond Sparks gets approached by Eddie Thompson yeah. to ask Ian McCall, uh, he, he's got to make that, ask that question if yeah. Ian McCall's willing to do it. Now, I, I personally didn't think it would happen because I thought that Ian had already made it, sure, clear. Made it clear. He yeah. was happy to stay where he was, but things have moved on for Ian. He's changed his opinion on it. Yeah. I think the circumstances have changed and Ian McCall was the one that decided that he was going to make the move. Yeah. So people will be hurt. Paul hegarty has been hurting it and the other people, uh, Falkirk have been hurt. But it's, it's a natural process of the job market. Yeah, Somebody things. wants you and you ask a question. Yeah. Raymond Sparks asks a question and Ian McCall decides to go. A victim of his own success, Ian McCall. Absolutely. Very much so. Absolutely. Now